Hello, welcome back to the channel. Right before I start, I would just like to give a shout out to Jessica. Thank you Jessica for your creepypasta suggestion. I appreciate it greatly. The story that I'm reading is composed of multiple chapters, so I'm going to be reading one chapter per video. Thank you Jessica for your suggestion, I appreciate it greatly. When I was a little kid, the two things I loved most in life were Godzilla and NES games. So naturally, when Godzilla, Monster of Monsters, came out, it was like a dream come true. Well, almost. To sum it up, most of the game revolved around getting through very repetitive outer space levels, while smashing up tanks and jets, and then fighting against Godzilla's monster enemies. Overall, it was pretty mediocre, but back then I didn't care. When I got the game as a present for my 10th birthday, I played it night and day as much as I could. Unfortunately, I had traded the game for Amagon a year later, much to my regret when I found out what that game was like. Recently, I had bought a new NES system and through a lot of hunting and asking around, my friend Billy finally managed to find a copy of Godzilla, Monster of Monsters. I was pumped to play my favorite childhood game. It never even occurred to me to ask where Billy found it. He also gave me some other games like Legend of Zelda, Bomberman, and some stupid thing called it Action 52, but Godzilla had to come first. So I started the game and the nostalgia came flooding back like a tidal wave. Godzilla's 8-bit theme song flooded proudly through the speakers and I was soon grinning like an idiot. Some people laugh at me for playing such outdated games, but I've never had as much enjoyment for any games other than those on the NES. Those 8-bit games take me back to when things were much simpler, more safe. But after what happened with this game, I don't have those feelings anymore. I had forgotten how quick the fun of smashing things as Godzilla wore off in the scrolling levels. The game bombards you with bullets and things crashing into you from every direction and you're too big to avoid most of them. Although my excitement had worn down some, it wasn't long at all before I got to my first boss battle. My first opponent was Hezora an obscure squid kaiju who had never been in a Godzilla movie. The most annoying thing about fighting Hezora is that he always backs you into a corner and starts smacking you with his tentacles and you're unable to move until he gets off of you. This move doesn't do any damage but it can stall you until the timer runs out and you have to start the fight over and he regains some health. It's as annoying as it sounds and of course, he did it when I fought him. Only for some reason this caused the game to glitch up, because once he started smacking me, he never stopped. The timer is supposed to end the fight in about 40 seconds, but this lasted for nearly 5 minutes. After a while the graphics started to mess up with little red blocks all over the place. Which was weird, but I just took the game out, blew on it, and then started again. I wasn't about to let a little glitch stand in my way, so I started again and this time defeated Hezora and the level's other boss monster, Morguera, without any problems. So then it was on to the next planet, Mars. I browsed around the board and found something unexpected, where Baron's piece should have been there was instead a piece representing Titanosaurus. There were only 10 kaiju in the game and Titanosaurus was not one of them, or so I thought. Perhaps Titanosaurus was originally intended to be in the game but was swapped out by Varan for some reason. So I began to feel very excited, not only was I playing my favorite game but I was playing a prototype of some sort of 
but I was playing a prototype of some sort with a new monster. Needless to say, I ran through the levels as fast as I could to see Titanosaurus in action. Fought Jezora again and beat him before he could do his tentacle smack, but this time the glitch started happening when he died. Jezora's spirit didn't sink to the bottom, but instead seemed to be devoured by the glitch, and his eyes started randomly spawning all over the screen. I know now these glitches with Hezora were my first warning sign that something was very wrong with the game, but foolishly I ignored it and proceeded to fight Mogira, who this time had a glitch of his own. Mogira was twice the size he should have been, which startled me. He was also considerably harder to beat than usual, which is to say not at all. But soon I had defeated him also and when he died yet another glitch happened. This happened extremely fast so I was lucky to get a screen cap of it all. But what happened was that the giant Mogira spirit started to shatter and melt. Also if you look at the garbled text at the right corner of the screen You'll notice what appears to be a bird in a cage. I still have no idea what that meant. At this point, I was about to fight Titanosaurus, and I was worried as to what kind of glitches would happen this time. But to my surprise, Titanosaurus looked fine. Although all of the other games' bipedal monsters were the same height, Titanosaurus was a bit taller. But since Titanosaurus was actually taller than Godzilla in his film debut, I thought this was kind of cool. After a very fun fight with the monster that wasn't supposed to be in the game, I took over the enemy base and proceeded not to Jupiter like normal, but instead to Patos. <laughs>